John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness hasn't overcome it. There came a man, sent from God, whose name was John. The same came as a witness, that he might testify about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but was sent that he might testify about the light. The true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own, and those who were his own didn't receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become God's children, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The Word became flesh and lived among us. We saw His glory, such glory as of the one and only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about Him. He cried out, saying, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, for He was before me. From his fullness we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The one and only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him. This is John's testimony when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He declared, and didn't deny, but he declared, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. They said therefore to him, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. The ones who had been sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you don't know. He is the one who comes after me who is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loosen. These things were done in Bethany, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I didn't know him, but for this reason I came baptizing in water, that he would be revealed to Israel. John testified, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven, and it remained on him. I didn't recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, On whomever you will see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, teacher, where are you staying? 
he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is, by interpretation, Peter. On the next day, he was determined to go out into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said about him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I told you I saw you underneath the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. He said to him, Most certainly I tell you all, hereafter you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Chapter 2 The third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus also was invited with his disciples to the wedding. When the wine ran out, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six water pots of stone set there after the Jews' way of purifying, containing two or three metrics apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the ruler of the feast. So they took it. When the ruler of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and didn't know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The ruler of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when the guests have drunk freely, then that which is worse. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those who sold oxen, sheep and doves, and the changers of money, sitting. He made a whip of cords and threw all out of the temple, both the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the changers' money and overthrew their tables. To those who sold the doves, he said, Take these things out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will eat me up. The Jews therefore answered him, What sign do you show us, seeing that you do these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews therefore said, It took forty-six years to build this temple, 
Will you raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name, observing his signs which he did. But Jesus didn't entrust himself to them, because he knew everyone, and because he didn't need for anyone to testify concerning man, for he himself knew what was in man. Chapter 3 Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to him by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Most certainly, I tell you, unless one is born anew, he can't see God's kingdom. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most certainly, I tell you, Unless one is born of water and spirit, he can't enter into God's kingdom. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Don't marvel that I said to you, you must be born anew. The wind blows where it wants to, and you hear its sound, but don't know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel and don't understand these things? Most certainly I tell you, we speak that which we know and testify of that which we have seen, and you don't receive our witness. If I told you earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven but he who descended out of heaven, the Son of Man, who is in heaven. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God didn't send His Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved through Him. He who believes in Him is not judged. He who doesn't believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and doesn't come to the light, lest his works would be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his works may be revealed, that they have been done in God. After these things, Jesus came with his disciples into the land of Judea, he stayed there with them and baptized. John also was baptizing in Enon near Salem, because there was much water there. They came and were baptized, for John was not yet thrown into prison. Therefore a dispute arose on the part of John's disciples with some Jews about purification. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified. Behold, he baptizes, and everyone is coming to him. John answered, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given him from heaven. You yourselves testify that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him 
rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is made full. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. What he has seen and heard, of that he testifies, and no one receives his witness. He who has received his witness has set his seal to this, that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. One who believes in the Son has eternal life, but one who disobeys the Son won't see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Chapter 4 Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself didn't baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into Galilee. He needed to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being tired from his journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman therefore said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. So where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father, Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his children and his livestock? Jesus answered her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I don't get thirsty, neither come all the way here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You said well, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship that which you don't know. We worship that which we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah comes, he who is called Christ. When he has come, he will declare to us all things. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who speaks to you. At this, his disciples came. They marveled that he was speaking with a woman. Yet no one said, What are you looking for? Or, Why do you speak with her? So the woman left her water pot, 
went away into the city and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything that I did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the city and were coming to him. In the meanwhile, the disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. The disciples therefore said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Don't you say there are yet four months until the harvest? Behold, I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, that they are white for harvest already. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit to eternal life that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you haven't labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. From that city many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman, who testified, He told me everything that I did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they begged him to stay with them. He stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of your speaking, for we have heard for ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. After the two days, he went out from there and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. For they also went to the feast. Jesus came, therefore, again to Cana of Galilee, where he made the water into wine. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and begged him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will in no way believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. As he was now going down, his servants met him and reported, saying, Your child lives. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. They said, therefore, to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. He believed, as did his whole house. This is again the second sign that Jesus did, having come out of Judea into Galilee. Chapter 5 After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, or paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at certain times into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was healed of whatever disease he had. A certain man was there who had been sick for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been sick for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Arise, take up your mat and walk. 
Immediately the man was made well and took up his mat and walked. Now it was the Sabbath on that day. So the Jews said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry the mat. He answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your mat and walk? But he who was healed didn't know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, a crowd being in the place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you are made well. Sin no more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this cause, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, because he did these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, so I am working too. For this cause, therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also called God his own father, making himself equal with God. Jesus, therefore, answered them, Most certainly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father doing. For whatever things he does, these the Son also does likewise. For the Father has affection for the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. He will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he desires. For the Father judges no one, but he has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who doesn't honor the Son doesn't honor the Father who sent him. Most certainly I tell you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, and doesn't come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Most certainly I tell you, the hour comes, and now is, when the dead will hear the Son of God's voice, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave to the Son also to have life in himself. He also gave him authority to execute judgment, because he is a Son of Man. Don't marvel at this. For the hour comes in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I don't seek my own will, but the will of my Father who sent me. If I testify about myself, my witness is not valid. It is another who testifies about me. I know that the testimony which he testifies about me is true. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. But the testimony which I receive is not from man. However, I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony which I have is greater than that of John, for the works which the Father gave me to accomplish, the very works that I do, testify about me, that the Father has sent me. The Father himself who sent me has testified about me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. You don't have his word living in you, because you don't believe him whom he sent. You search the scriptures, because you think that in them you have eternal life. And these are they which testify about me. Yet you will not come to me, that you may have life. I don't receive glory from men, but I know you, that you don't have God's love in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name and you don't receive me. If another comes in his own name, 
you will receive him. How can you believe? You receive glory from one another, and you don't seek the glory that comes from the only God. Don't think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, even Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you don't believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Chapter 6 After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Sea of Tiberias. A great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs which he did on those who were sick. Jesus went up into the mountain, and he sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Jesus, therefore, lifting up his eyes and seeing that a great multitude was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread that these may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. Jesus took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to those who were sitting down, likewise also of the fish, as much as they desired. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the broken pieces which are left over, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up, and filled twelve baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. When, therefore, the people saw the sign which Jesus did, they said, This is truly the prophet who comes into the world. Jesus, therefore, perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. They entered into the boat and were going over the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. The sea was tossed by a great wind blowing. When, therefore, they had rowed about twenty-five or thirty stadia, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. They were willing, therefore, to receive him into the boat. Immediately, the boat was at the land where they were going. On the next day, the multitude that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one in which his disciples had embarked and that Jesus hadn't entered with his disciples into the boat. But his disciples had gone away alone. However, boats from Tiberias came near to the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the multitude, therefore, saw that Jesus wasn't there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Most certainly I tell you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food which perishes, but for the food which remains to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For God the Father has sealed him. They said therefore to him, What must we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. They said, therefore, to him, 
What then do you do for a sign that we may see and believe you? What work do you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus, therefore, said to them, Most certainly, I tell you, it wasn't Moses who gave you the bread out of heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. They said, therefore, to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will not be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me, and yet you don't believe. All those whom the Father gives me will come to me. He who comes to me I will in no way throw out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of my Father who sent me, that of all he has given to me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up at the last day. This is the will of the one who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews, therefore, murmured concerning him, because he said, I am the bread which came down out of heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How then does he say, I have come down out of heaven? Therefore Jesus answered them, Don't murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who hears from the Father and has learned comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most certainly, I tell you, he who believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, that anyone may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Yes, the bread which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews, therefore, contended with one another, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus, therefore, said to them, Most certainly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you don't have life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day, for my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven. Not as our fathers ate the manna and died, he who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at this, said to them, Does this cause you to stumble? Then what if you would see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who didn't believe, and who it was who would betray him. He said, 
For this cause I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it is given to him by my Father. At this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Jesus said, therefore, to the twelve, You don't also want to go away, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Didn't I choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? Now he spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve.